What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. So today I have some suspension parts for the 2017 Audi S3. This is my 2017 Audi S3. It's a 8V platform Audi, all wheel drive, Quattro, and as we all know with Quattro system, it can have a little bit of issues with some understeer from the factory. Now there's kind of two reasons for this. First off, this thing maybe has like I don't know, 0.5 degrees negative camber in the front uh, from the factory, which definitely does not help with turn in. The other thing is that these cars are set up safe from the factory, so they are kind of designed to uh, understeer. One of the ways we can correct that issue is by installing a rear anti-sway bar. Now, I picked this one up from 034 Motorsports. Boom, these guys are awesome. They make some great parts for the S3, and I got a bunch more stuff for the S3 coming as well. So uh, look forward to that guys, little hints uh, here. You know, the car may look a little bit high, so we could be doing some stuff like with that. Also, uh, that camber situation, we're gonna do a little bit of correction on that coming up soon. So make sure to subscribe and well, watch my videos because you're gonna see a lot more stuff on this car. Uh, this car has been to the track twice. Uh, I've done Laguna Seca in this car and also Thunder Hill East. So those aren't just like poser stickers just kinda, you know, showing, uh, you know, maybe I like the track or something. We've actually been there. Even melted the paint off of the brakes at Thunder Hill East. So yeah, I uh, bubbled the paint straight off of these with the 034 uh, race pads. The cobalt friction race pads, which worked amazingly. Um, but as you can see, I got a bit of heat into there. So let's go ahead and open up the new sway bar in this box. All right, let's get this thing out of here. Okay, so what do we have? We have a 22.2 millimeter rear anti-roll anti-sway bar. This thing is from the 034 Motorsports, like I said, and they got it packaged up pretty dang well. That just looks like some extra packaging tape or some, uh, some padding right here. So we're gonna get rid of all that stuff. And it's boxed up very well, I must say. So that is great. Also comes with the mounts, which have uh, Zerk fittings on them, which is great because you're actually gonna be able to lubricate the rear sway bar without having to remove uh, the bushings or anything like that. So that is super cool. Also came with some new mounting hardware. So that is great. You can tell these guys really put some effort into making some high quality parts. And as far as suspension components go, this is the best boxing I've, uh, I've ever seen on suspension parts uh, when I'm kind of comparing it to other sway bars that I've installed on previous cars that I've had in the past. As you can tell, it has the, uh, the limiters, so it's gonna you know, stop in those areas where it has the bushings on the car. It has the 034 Motorsport logo, so that is super cool. So then we have the two adjustable positions on the sway bar itself. The one that is furthest away, that is actually gonna be the softer position, whereas the one that is closer, the closer hole, is gonna be the harder position. So that is 52% stiffer than the original hollow rear sway bar. This is a solid 22.2 rear sway bar. So this is really gonna stiffen up the rear and uh, help the rear end of the car rotate, help with turn in, and really get it a bit more oversteer. I'll insert a little clip of a little bit of oversteer action here. Um, from last time I was out at Thunder Hill, coming into a turn way too hot. Um, so maybe we can have some more of that action going on, but uh, you know, a little more predictable. But one thing I wanted to kind of cover real quick before we go ahead and uh, just rip the tires off and throw this thing on is why upgrade the anti-sway bar first. One reason I like doing anti-sway bars first on all of my cars really that I've ever purchased is it's just one of those things that eventually you're gonna wanna do. Uh, I find that it's a less expensive option for uh, most people to start out with. So it's, it's very inexpensive, it's very affordable to do, and it has a great bang for your buck. Uh, the other thing I would recommend is tires and brakes. So I would say NA sway bars, tires, and brake upgrade. That would be your number one thing. Um, and then, you know, onto lowering springs, stuff like that, or, you know, coilovers, that sort of thing. As far as the tools that you're gonna need to do this installation, you're gonna need two hands. You're gonna need a six millimeter and a 10 millimeter triple square, 
which uh, look like this. These are triple square sockets. If you guys have done much work on a Volkswagen before or an Audi, you'll know that uh, triple squares are pretty common on these cars. So it's gonna be one of those tools you're gonna have to pick up. Uh, six millimeter Allens, T25 Torx, which most little tool sets have. 13 millimeter wrench, a 16 millimeter wrench, and a torque wrench. So overall, pretty basic hand tools. The only thing that's basically gonna be specialty for most people are gonna be these triple squares, which you can pick these up pretty inexpensively. So we got the car jacked up off the ground safely with jack stands. And now, go ahead and get under the car and remove the factory sway bar, which is here. We're gonna use a triple square, number 10. And that is gonna remove these M8 triple square clamps right here. Just go ahead and remove these bolts until they come all the way out and do that on each side. They come out very simply. Now also you wanna make sure you look out for your uh, level sensor right here. Make sure not to hit that because that is a, uh, it's a sensitive little piece right here. It's just made out of plastic. So you definitely don't wanna break that. Uh, this is part of your uh, suspension for your dynamic ride control. Using an M6 triple square, we're gonna insert that into the end link itself. That is gonna restrict it from rotating. After that, I'm gonna use my 16 millimeter wrench and just loosen this end link until I uh, back it all the way off and I can remove the end link. Right, so after removing the end link nut right here, you can just go ahead and pull the end link right out of the sway bar. Uh, just a little bit of easy prying and it should pop out. Well, maybe not the easiest of prying, but it'll pop out of there without a ton of issue. So there we go. So now you can see the sway bar is much more free on this side. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other end link on the other side. Okay, so now the sway bar is completely kind of dropped. So we can remove a few more items to access this area. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two T25 Torx right here. They're just rib nutted into the lower control arm right here. So now the final thing we need to lower is the exhaust. You'll see this uh, exhaust hanger up here. It's got a little bracket. There's a bolt up here. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen that up on each side and see if we can gain a little more, more access to where I can drop drop down the exhaust so I can get the sway bar out. I went ahead and tucked these position sensors up. That way they're out of the way and that way they're not gonna get broken by any means. After loosening up the 13 millimeter on the exhaust hanger, you can see I have a bit more movement in the exhaust area. And now I should be able to maneuver this thing out of here. Right. There we go. It was kind of hard to get it around that lip, but that should be it right there. Ah, all right, finally. So just so you guys can see, this is how the sway bar installs. So you can see that it's in, a, in an upward angle and the little hump is kind of over here. I took the bracket pieces and took the bushings. I took those off and installed them onto the sway bar before I install onto the car. That's just gonna make it easier. Now when you install these brackets on the car, you wanna make sure the uh, Zerk fitting is pointing downward at a downward angle. That way you can get a grease gun in there. These are really cool because it actually goes all the way through, you can see that little nipple right there. That is where the hole is, and that is how you can actually lubricate these after the fact, which is a great design. It is really, really smart, and yeah, that's something uh, that shows them going the extra mile to make a part just that much better. So here's where I take the sway bar and, uh, well, basically try to reinstall it like I uh, got it out of there. So it was kind of something along the lines of this. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the same kind of angle and uh, see where I, see what I can do. Okay, that worked pretty well right there. Ah, oh, yeah. All right. Boom. That uh, right there is gonna work. So that is how I got it in there. Uh, you just wiggle it until, till it works. 
I'm gonna grab these little mounts right here. We're gonna slip them over the bushings and I installed on the ends already. Um, if you forgot to do that, go ahead and do that now. Get these right here and we're gonna install the new hardware that came with the kit because this is a little bit longer. As you can see with the uh, billet aluminum, it's a little bit deeper uh, due to the fact that it has the zert fitting in there, which is really an awesome benefit to this rear sway bar is gonna help cut down on squeakiness and all of that type of stuff. That looks really, really nice down there. So it's it does add some uh, bling to below the car and you get the cool 034 Motorsports sticker. And now what we gotta do is uh, insert the in links into the sway bar. So those are just hiding down right in here. So if you can't see them guys, but you should know what they are if you're this far along. Um, if you use the outermost or the closest hole to you, that is gonna be the softer setting. Um, basically less oversteer and the closer setting, which is gonna be closer to the bar. So the closest to the bar, that is going to be the stiffer setting, which is gonna give you more oversteer. So I'm gonna go with the stiffer setting because uh, I tend to like my rear sway bar pretty stiff and I like a lot of oversteer. Um, it's just, to me, it's more predictable how the car is going to, uh, going to handle and it's a hell of a lot more fun. Let's go ahead and put those back on, use the T25 Torx and uh, get those kind of just snugged back down. Throwing those 13 millimeter bolts back up into the exhaust mounts right here. So just gonna go ahead and torque that back down. Get that nice and snug. All right, so now using a number six Allen, I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down to the appropriate value. And well, this rear sway bar is now fully installed. That was fairly simple. Um, you know, wiggling it out is pretty much the hardest part. And yeah, we're gonna be able to lower this down. And I think I'll give you guys a review of the difference in feel tomorrow.